सो गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन अश्विनी हेलो हेलो एवरी वन सो आई हैव ऑलरेडी जस्ट अपडेटेड ऑन द टेलीग्राम चैनल ऑफ अवर पेड सब्सक्राइबर्स की फॉर टूडे इट इट इज एट सॉरी नाइन टू टेन थर्टी एंड देन हाफ एन आवर डिस्कशन आई विल टेक टूडे आई विल टेक द इन जनरल डिस्कशन right uh, and from tomorrow onwards class timing will be 8 to 9:30 and from 9:30 to 10 i will take a descriptive topic okay and from sunday uh just just give me a second just give me a second ha huh? this is an important call i have to take sorry Good evening. Good evening. Good evening to everyone. Ayusha, Divyanshu, Venkat, Deepthi, Jyoti, Vikul, Vivek. Everyone, good evening. And I'm sorry, I have I was on a call. I was not supposed to take the calls, but sometimes, especially in this COVID times, because there is no work time schedule. Means you have to be workable every time. <laughs> okay, now. 
So in the last class, we have discussed about poverty. And I told you the poverty can be defined in two ways. One is absolute poverty and relative poverty. Right. And for the relative poverty, we use the Gini coefficient and Lorentz curve. Where in the absolute poverty, we just take what we just take uh, head count method where our focus is on what availability of food to every person. Right. And I also told you India earlier was focused on uh, head count method that is absolute poverty. But gradually, when our economic profile has increased, India is able to generate more GDP. Since then, we have started focusing on what? Since then, we have started focusing on relative poverty in a more comprehensive manner. And for that, Tindalkar committee also came. Right. So, uh, what? Actually, I am going to do is from here is uh, yesterday I have discussed the concept of poverty with you. Today, I am going to con uh, discuss the concept of inflation with you, right? So, I already discussed uh, in the beginning about RBI monetary policy. In the budgeting chapter, I have discussed about the fiscal policy in related constraint. Now, I have discussed the poverty and I am going to discuss about the inflation. Right. So when all these core concepts are going to be discussed, then you are able to understand in the better manner uh, about the performance of Indian economy from 1947 till then date and some descriptive issues where we have we must know the concept part. Right. We must know the concept part. Otherwise, we are not able to use it while writing an answer. Right. So uh, my my uh, objective is to first just finish the crucial conceptual part of economy, Indian economy, right? So that you are able to uh, write few things. Otherwise, it is going to be very difficult for you. So the, the issue of inequality, the issue of inequality and in income, it is going to be better understand if you also know the concept of inflation, if you know the concept of uh, balance of payment, all these things, the core concept, if you are able to know, then it is easier to understand that part. Right. So this is why I have chosen to take the inflation part today. Sir, will there be life plus finance too? Yes, obviously, obviously. So I have just discussed the bank means uh, uh, this part RBA role power and function. And I have just given the structure of banking system in India. Uh, functions of banking, functions of development banks in India and how the banks will work. Finance part I have not discussed the major part is still left means the market part where we have to discuss uh, the money market the capital market all these things is still left so uh, i'll discuss it later but because many students want that economy part should be done first so i have started with the finance part but many student and uh, uh, admin was also interested to complete this uh, economy part also so that's why I have shifted the gear according to the need and requirement. And it is actually it is right also. Once you will know the fundamentals of economy, then you are going to be more confident while tackling the more technical part, the more technical part that is the finance part. Right. So we will do that part. Later. The burden of inflation falls on. Falls more on poor. So yeah, inequality eventuality increases. Obviously, very good. Yes, very good assessment. Yes. Pancho Shreya, good evening. So, inflation and inflation is a kind of uh, evergreen political phenomena also because in the present day times, if the country is a democratic country, then government is always under pressure, right? Always under pressure to curb the inflation. Whereas the same time, government is also under pressure to look for development so how this love triangle works about what inflation monetary policy and fiscal policy Right. So classic love triangle between inflation, monetary policy and fiscal policy at the end, when I'm going to make you understand about the core concept of inflation, then this issue will come inflation, 
versus monetary policy versus fiscal policy fiscal policy versus monetary policy and inflation is going to be in between this two monetary policy and fiscal policy that's why i consider is a kind of left triangle right so it's a kind of <laughs> left triangle but means uh, you have to be why why i'm using this term because despite knowing despite knowing the rationality people discard the rationality and people will go either government or rbi sometimes they know that ki there will be consequences right so when people are in love they know the consequences but still they go for it right so similarly there are the consequences but still government is bound to do the certain necessary action similarly rbi is also bound to take certain necessary action despite knowing the consequences right so rationality philosophy political pressure lot of things are going to work here and you have an affection right affection rbi have an affection to control the inflation government has affection to drive the growth and driving the growth means you are also driving the inflation with yourself right so this is why the kind of tussle kind of cooperation everything is going to be there when we discuss the inflation monetary policy and fiscal policy right <clears throat> vikul law focus on the studies i'll take the kanpuriya part at the end of the lecture with the punch line uh sir should we fill form for sib should be also why not why not see uh there are the people uh means uh one of my friend uh he's not i, I cannot say the friend but he he generally consider me as a friend he is an ips right now he is senior uh, than me means he is four years senior me to me and he he has given all the government job exams means while he was preparing for the civil services he generally do give all ssc bank pio whatever the exam he he just want to uh, enjoy that pressure means that pressure situation of the examination hall and to check his different different ability he do all the exams right so uh, first of all it is nothing wrong to appear in any exam if you are preparing for general studies if you are preparing for the economy portion ga current affairs all these things you are reading right if you are reading all those things and even 80% syllabus is common any competitive exam where the 80% 85% syllabus is common you can write that exam nothing just for the practice right so those those uh, so called the mock provided by various platform it is better to write a good exam yes you have to pay and you have to prepare the standard of the question is going to be asked by sidb and the standard of the question is going to be given by any platform any platform mock platform it is going to be completely total, total different experience right so if you are going to have an opportunity to write any ibps exam or any exam where the syllabus is 80% common you can use that test paper as a mock drill right real time real kind of the question everything is going to be real without any hidden motive right because the mocks at online platform always a hidden motive to scare the students so that they can purchase their course whereas whereas if you are going to give any exam like sit be ibps or whatever they they do not have any hidden agenda they have very one clear agenda they have to eliminate you right they want to eliminate you so that they can have only those people who are uh, well uh, knowledgeable person and they are capable person so they have one approach only the elimination approach they want to eliminate so whosoever is going to be left they are going to be selected right so it is always good thing you can any go for an exam <clears throat> so okay sir please complete the syllabus are bhaiya start to karne do let me start <laughs> okay i have the syllabus i have the syllabus so let me start only then i will go for it na if anything is going to be left you can comment here i'll do that thing also
ओके जो वट एवर यू आर एबल टू गेट इट फर्स्ट फर्स्ट गेट इट देन वरी अबाउट वॉट इज लेफ्ट राइट डू नॉट वरी अबाउट वॉट इज गोइंग टू बी लेफ्ट वाइल द पर्सन इज गिविंग समथिंग टू यू फर्स्ट टेक इट देन से दैट की आई एम नॉट एबल टू गेट दीज थिंग्स ऑल्सो यू हैव प्रोमिस्ड राइट सो फर्स्ट टेक इट ओके ऑलवेज हैव दिस स्ट्रेटेजी इट इज ऑलवेज गुड फॉर द स्टूडेंट inflation inflation in very general term in general term inflation is defined as what it is defined as price rise right so inflation is defined as price rise now this price rise may be due to various reasons the primary reason may be means there are there are many reasons demand supply cost so first demand pulled inflation demand pulled inflation for example during the navratris right that nine day of the fasting all food items especially the fruits right all the fruits item and related deshi ghee and kind of the thing their prices are going to be very high right whereas the price of the chicken and mutton the demand is going to decrease during that time and from the 10th and 11th day onwards the demand of those goods are going to decrease whereas the demand of non vegetarian food is going to increase so when demand create a pressure right when demand create a pressure because of huge demand right because of huge demand there is a rise in the price then we will call it as a demand pulled inflation so the main reason for rising of the price is demand then we will call it as a demand pulled inflation right whereas if the supply is in constraint for example during the covid times during the covid times demand for the certain goods were increased but the classic example of supply pushed inflation supply pushed inflation the classic example was semiconductor there was huge shortage of semiconductor which is used in all electronic devices including car chip everywhere the semiconductor is being used and these semiconductors are basically manufactured in taiwan china malaysia indonesia these are the countries who who do manufacture this semiconductor because of strict lockdown in that reason so there is a huge mismatch between demand and supply so supply was decreased why the plants in all these countries was down means uh, they are locked down because of the spread of the corona virus so that is why the semi there is a huge shortage of the semiconductor all over the world so we can say that ki that kind of the rise in the price of the semiconductor or related goods is was because of supply pushed inflation supply need to be pushed right so the word pull and push is used in what context supply must be pushed we must have to increase the supply right when the inflation is going to be there inflation is there and thus inflation means the price are rising because of the supply shortage we have to push the supply in order to decrease the price right supply pushed inflation whereas demand demand is there right so demand is there we there is a excess demand so we have to bring down the demand in order to decrease the price that is why demand pulled inflation now what is caused pulled right you have seen you are seeing there is a conflict between uh, russia and ukraine is going on and ukraine is invaded by the russia right russia is oil producing country right russia is oil producing country so if there will be any war and that war is going to disturb the availability of crude oil 
or the supply of crude oil all over the world in that case what is going to happen for country like india especially for country like india which is energy deficient country and 78% of fuel requirement of india is coming through what imports so india is importing their 78% requirement 78% of fuel and energy requirement especially fuel requirement from outside so in any case any crisis like situation in the world right where oil supply oil supply is going to hit but because of the fuel deficient country like india india have to pay more price more and more price to purchase that fuel and that fuel is being used at every level whether it is production or its movement or its consumption right so production distribution and consumption at all three level the fuel price is going to impact right so the cost of production the cost of distribution and cost of consumption all the cost of these three things production distribution and consumption is going to increase so cost is increasing why cost is increasing because certain input items are being getting costly right supply is there supply is there but the basic ingredient price are increased so inflation in india is rising because of cost of production is going to be increased production is going in the proper way production is going in the proper way even demand is normal production is normal but the problem is the price of certain item which is being used in the production activity they are the key factors and their price is rising so this is why the cost is pulled right so we have to bring down the cost so these are the three basic way to define the inflation inflation either through because of demand either it is through supply and cost generally if you will look the world economy if you will look the world economy at world economy generally because india is a kind of exception where the india is a deficient country energy deficient country and large economy also right so generally recent times during the corona during the corona and especially when lockdown was uplifted right india and other european countries and in us lockdown was uplifted when lockdown was uplifted right means the process of unlockdown was started people were locked down so that is why there was a limited demand from their side they are not able to go to restaurants they are not able to go to the movies they are not able to go for amusement thing kind of the thing they are not allowed to travel so they are they have limited demands right and at the same time production was also down because of the lockdown what happened immediately after the lockdown was uplifted right immediately after after the upliftment of the lockdown demand was increased suddenly why because you are allowed to go outside right you are allowed to go outside you are allowed to watch the movie you are allowed to do the various activities which you are doing before the corona so demand was suddenly suddenly increased right demand was suddenly increased but the problem with the supply side you just not need to produce for example i want to purchase the television right sony tv i want to purchase sony company tv not sony channel so sony tv i want to purchase but maybe if my money is going to be increase in my bank account i am capable of purchasing that tv but the supply should be there right so production and their distribution and from their movement to the particular uh, company where i can purchase or the showroom or at online platform it must be reached there otherwise i cannot purchase it so generally what happened when both sides are affected both side like demand side is impacted what happens during covid what happened during the covid times during covid right and especially covid lockdown that has impacted demand and supply both but when it it was uplifted means lockdown 
lockdown was uplifted then there was a sudden rise in the demand there was a sudden rise in the demand and that caused that caused demand inflation demand related inflation demand pulled inflation but as i'm telling you supply need more time to be managed properly demand can be shoot up demand can be shoot up but we cannot shoot up the supply immediately because now at the global level supply chains are what supply chains are interconnected right supply chains are interconnected see what happened uh, when the swiss canal was blocked when swiss canal was blocked because of that ship was got stuck in between so what happened the entire entire uh, economy between the uh, means the trade and commerce between europe and asia got stuck right so now because of the global village advanced technologies now the production distribution all these things need to be in synchronization right but because of this synchronization is required you cannot suddenly increase the supply okay so this is why supply constraints were there so what we have seen in 2021 especially in 2021 the rise in the price at global level that was a distinct rise in the price because it was not just because of either rise in the demand not just because of a rise in the supply both factors are responsible equally for the rise in the global price global price especially european countries and us where they are generally inflation the price is always very mild or low even those countries are feeling the heat in 2021 so 2021 where <coughs> rahu and ketu came side by side right so this is rahu and this is ketu both came side by side they are behind you as an inflation right so this <coughs> this is the kind of the phenomena cost pushed inflation is not always relevant for all countries but cost pushed inflation especially country like india it is important so we must have to know that right now uh, one more thing the concept of most of the concept of economy right most of the concept of economy is developed in west developed by the western countries right and they are having better economic system right so these concepts these concept whether it is inflation investment uh, consumption all the economic phenomena we generally do study they are being created they are being written they are being validated in the context of western economies not economy like india right so all these concept whether it is the concept of inflation right so classic example again india right you are able to manage what you are able to manage demand you are able to manage supply you are able to manage cost but what about the structural constraints what about the structural constraints which is being faced by a country like india or any other developing country like monsoon i was explaining uh, somewhere uh, i think i in i was doing this thing in the sebi class so one student all of sudden he came ki why geography is being taught in the class of economy <laughs> right so i told him ki, no no my dear i am not explaining geography here i am explaining ki how geographical conditions are responsible for inflation right i am going to explain here also for example in india agriculture is very important all of you know that because it's the largest employer right agriculture sector but in india agriculture sector is dependent on monsoon right so agriculture so we are experiencing demand pulled as well as supply pushed inflation in india yes right now we we are facing both inflation right now we are we are having this both inflation so that's why sometimes there is a policy paralysis like situation right now uh, just just focus on another aspect also 
ओके सो आई वॉज टेलिंग यू इन इंडिया एग्रीकल्चर इज लार्जली डिपेंडेंट ऑन मॉनसून वॉट आर द वॉट इज मॉनसून मॉनसून आर वॉर्म करेंट्स जनरेटेड इन द साउथ ईस्ट एशियन पार्ट ऑफ और द साउदर्न पार्ट साउदर्न एंड नदर्न पार्ट ऑफ द इंडियन ओशन एंड बे ऑफ बेंगाल राइट सो दीज दीज लो प्रेशर वॉर्म करेंट दे मूव फ्रॉम दैट रीजन फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ here is a bangladesh it is india and here our beloved country pakistan and here it is sri lanka which map we always get in free when we ever we have purchased the map of india right so uh, these these warm currents generate from here right and they move in this direction so many times they have asked this question ki which country uh, which state get the monsoon first answer is Kerala, Kerala, the land of God. It is called as the land of God, right? So, land of God, the Kerala is the first state who received the monsoon, right? And because these are the warm currents, whenever they they came to the land part, they precipitate, and you get the rainfall, right? So, warm current always have a moisture, and that moisture, whenever it is going to reach in the cold and cold area, comparison to the ocean area, they precipitate, and the rain happen, right? that is rain is going to happen so this is the monsoon from arabian sea as well as indian ocean whereas some waves are also going to be generated in this area and that is bay of bengal right so in that way monsoon will come now why i am telling you is because these are the monsoon waves right now there is a north america if i will take the uh, south sorry south america here so from the south america you just see in the map whenever you will get the time there is a country known as chile right so on the chilean coast side of pacific ocean the chilean coast side of pacific ocean there is an one effect which is known as el nino effect right the el nino effect and la nino effect so el nino and la nino basically they are a spanish name what is this effect how it is generated is not our concern what is the effect and how it is horrible it's going to be the horrible experience for us so this is suppose that chile coast and in this area in this area of the globe that effect is going to generate that is the el nino effect that el nino effect is going to convert all the warm currents in the cold current and the cold current in the dry current so the cold currents are going to be converted in the warm current and warm current is going to convert it in the cold current so when that effect will start moving from chile coast from chile coast will start moving in the pacific ocean and it will move from chile towards australia and then entire southeast asia uh, this uh, asian countries and then it will head towards india so it is moving from this side to india right it is moving from this side and at the same time monsoon is also heading towards india so if they are going to overlap if they are going to be have a perfect overlap like solar eclipse right so if they are going to be perfectly overlap entire warm current is going to be converted in the cold current so for example thandi hawaye chalengi theek hai lekin barish nahi hogi there is no rain the cold waves are going to be there but you are not going to get the rain so if there is no rain rain deficient means drought this means entire agriculture is going to be disturbed right and we cannot control it we cannot control that ocean phenomena if it is going to be like this right so some part is going to be rain deficient if it is going to be like this then there is some rain deficient in certain parts right but if it is going to perfectly overlap there is only 20 30% rainfall so our agriculture our important part of economy is having a structural problem why structural problem because we cannot control it it is beyond our control that is the structural nature of what india indian subcontinent ab hai wahan par that is situated there you cannot change it 
राइट यू कैन नॉट चेंज द लोकेशन की नहीं 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 चलो लेट्स चेंज द लोकेशन जीपीएस दोबारा से सेट कर देते हैं लैंड को थोड़ा सा मूव करा देते हैं इधर ठीक है लाइक इन मुन्ना भाई ये भाई दीवाल तोड़ देते हैं यू कैन नॉट डू दैट थिंग राइट सो दिस इज द इंस्ट्रक्चरल प्रॉब्लम सो समाइम्स इट इज नॉट जस्ट डिमांड इट इज नॉट जस्ट सप्लाई इट इज नॉट जस्ट कॉर कॉस्ट इट इज ऑल्सो स्ट्रक्चरल प्रॉब्लम्स स्ट्रक्चरल प्रॉब्लम्स राइट स्ट्रक्चरल प्रॉब्लम एन एदर स्ट्रक्चरल प्रॉब्लम हाउ एवर वी कैन कंट्रोल इट बट इट्स लिटिल बिट डिफिकल्ट फॉर कंट्री लाइक इंडिया लाइक इन फॉर्मल इकोनॉमी we 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 are the part of formal payments and we are also part of the informal payments and at india very large level informal payments are being done so that is also a structural constraints in india we have poor infrastructure though government is emphasizing on the infrastructure but if you will compare the infrastructure with respect to china and other european and countries and usa infrastructure still need more push right so infrastructure is poor so these are the structural problem that causes rise in the price for example another example food whatever the food especially fruit and vegetable whatever the fruit and vegetable is produced in india 40% of that fruit and vegetable get wasted every year before going to reach your home शादी बरातों में जो वेस्ट करते हैं वट एवर वी आर गोइंग टू वेस्ट इन द वेडिंग्स द बिग फैट इंडियन वेडिंग्स दैट इज डिफरेंट थिंग आई एम जस्ट टेलिंग यू वट एवर वी आर प्रोड्यूसिंग बिफोर रीचिंग एट योर होम द फोर्टी परसेंट इज ऑलरेडी गेट डिस्ट्रॉय बिकॉज ऑफ द कंस्ट्रेंस इन द सप्लाई चेन राइट एंड वाई देर इज अ कंस्ट्रेंट इन द सप्लाई चेन बिकॉज इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर फॉर सच कैंड ऑफ द थिंग इज वेरी पुअर इन अवर कंट्री so these are the structural problem and that structural problem causes rise in the price right so it was a great economist his name was gunnar nudel gunnar nudel was there <clears throat> gunnar nudel was an economist and he he focused on structural problems caused inflation structural problem caused inflation so the structure there is a structure of our country and that structure causes inflation right so in that way he said that we see for developing countries like india and other developing countries you cannot just focus on demand supply and cost in order to resolve the problem of rising price if you want to resolve the problem of rising in the price you also have to focus on structural constraints whether you cannot change it on your own right but at least some other structural problem like lack of infrastructure like lack of food processing industry if you are going to push that thing so in the longer run you are able to control the inflation right so some out of the box thinking some out of the box thinking he has given so suppose that if there is a question on food inflation right how to control the food inflation then you can mention there ki india because of the agriculture related issue but also india have a structural problems that is why there is a high food inflation in india so this is why it is very important and gunnar middel is also known for his famous work asian drama and in this he called india as a soft state soft state means india do not have an ability to take hard decisions right so in the recent time there is a debate there is a debate among the scholar can we called india still we can call india as a soft state because under the new leadership especially in the under the leadership of prime minister narendra modi india have taken certain actions right india have taken certain actions which the actions and the image of india which was in past that is not actually overlapping 
the soft state image right so there is a debate among the scholars ki whether india is a soft state anyhow you can remember this name gunnar mridal because his name is also going to come in the planning right for example he he suggested that rather than going for five year plan rather than going for whole soul five year plan you should go for every year planning five year term is too much you should make a small goals for annual goals so that is why in 1978 when muradji desai uh, government was formed so they focused on the gunnar medals way of doing the planning right so i will discuss when i will discuss the history of indian economy there i am again going to mention this name gunnar mridal in his book asian drama that that is going to be the part of gk also right so if you are appearing in, in any question means any exam where the gk is asked you can remember this name gunnar mridal asian drama india as a soft state even upsc has asked the essay on the india image as a soft state right so <clears throat> basically inflation is of demand supply third is cost and fourth is structural related inflation right so i have defined the inflation now let's go and types of understand types of inflation as i said inflation is what inflation is price rise right so we also have to check the rate of inflation so the rate of inflation may be different different in the different different part of the world somewhere the rate of inflation is very low like 2% or 3% whereas in the some part of the world inflationary rate are little bit higher so how the inflationary rate are increasing decreasing okay how they are increasing decreasing on the basis of that we also have certain terminologies for that for example if the rate of inflation is increasing with a very fast rate we have the different terminology can anybody tell me what is the meaning of galloping inflation galloping inflation anybody want to answer what is galloping inflation very high inflation so normal inflation high inflation then very high inflation right then very high inflation generally what is normal inflation for countries like uh, us and other european countries right for them normal inflation is what normal inflation is around 2 to 4% inflation is a normal inflation if the inflation is heading towards 4% that is going to be cause of concern for them whereas for country like india 4 to 6% 4 to 6% inflation is a high inflation like for example in india parents consider that they they have the right to beat their kids right if you are not beating your kid then maybe other people society is going to have a kind of what guessing ki i think he is not his kid he is not beating any time right so beating a kid 
this is a kind of right indian parents always believe that so one indian couple was in norway uh, sorry in uh, ireland and they were beating their kid right and some neighbor have complained so their police they have taken the kids from their parents so they were completely shocked because they don't know that ki in those countries kids also have a right you cannot beat them right but in india it doesn't matter right especially till then teenage any time and especially boys even after the teenage they can be beaten down by parents sometimes flying chappal right so these kind of the things happen so for for that country like india it is common thing for india it is a common thing right that is not abnormal but when the western people are going to see that you are being going to be beaten <laughs> by your parents and even you are a teenager then they are going to be completely in the shock similarly for india 4 to 6% inflation right now it is a normal inflation right but the same inflationary rate if it is going to happen in usa that is going to be a very high inflation because they are at different level of development and india is at different level of development similarly in the social context our socialization is like that ki we are always a family right we are always a family and closely knitted family where the in the west the family is like what family is like a nuclear family sorry atomistic family right so their way of uh, uh, living life is completely different with the indian way of doing the life, indian way of life even in japan the same culture you can found like indian culture right so sometimes what we feel as a normal other people don't feel feel as a normal so sometimes students get an argument ki sir how you can say that ki 4 to 6% is a normal inflation are maine kaha bhai bhavnaon ko samjho theek hai ye india ki baat ho rahi hai don't get excited it is we are talking about the india right so in indian context 2 to 4 to 6% inflation is normal inflation so that is why whenever the rate of inflation whenever the rate of inflation is in single digit if the rate of inflation is in single digit we generally called it as a normal inflation however it is moving from moving towards double digit if it is moving towards double digit we called it as a high inflation so when india is going to say we are facing the high inflation and when usa is going to say we are going to face the high inflation or we are facing the high inflation so if in usa inflation is going to pass 4% right if in usa inflation is going to pass 4% they will they are going to use this term high inflation whereas in india 6% whereas country like uh, bangla uh, sorry pakistan if their inflation already in the double digit because for them 8 to 9% inflation is normal even for india if you will go back 10 years back even in the india rate of inflation was somewhere around uh, 8 to 9% 8 to 9% inflation so 7 to 8% inflation was normal 7 to 8% inflation was normal right but right now for india it is what in between 4 to 6% if it is going to above 6% then we can say that we are facing the high inflation what i just want to make you understand it is not like that a, a watertight classification it is not a watertight classification of normal and high inflation or galloping inflation or hyperinflation there is no watertight kind of the explanation it is more or less relatively relative concept ki what inflation was earlier and what inflation is right now right so we will take an example of what india and usa so in india normal inflation in india normal inflation 4 to 6 in usa 2 to 4% high inflation as i explained you now the third is galloping inflation when the inflation is already in double digit so in your country not see if it is this kind of the fluctuation this kind of the fluctuation so inflation was raised only for 
three months. Inflation was rise for three months. Then it is not going to be co called as a galloping inflation. But whereas there is a country who is always having this kind of the inflation, right? So this country is having this kind of the inflation that is in the double digit, like more than 10%, 20%, 30%, 40% inflation. And they are facing this situation in the longer run, longer run, at least for a one complete economic cycle of one year, one financial year. If they are having this situation in their country, then it is going to be called as galloping inflation. For example, countries who are hit hard by the sanctions like Iran, North Korea, right? Maybe in next few months, Russia. However, Russia is a very strong uh, military power. So when you are militarily powerful, you have more bargaining power, right? So being as a strong state, you always have the more bargaining power. Uh, you cannot compare uh, Russia and you can not, I mean, come Russia, Iran or Russia or North Korea is not comparable. You can put the sanction on Russia, you can put the sanction on Iran and you can put the sanction on North Korea, right? So these, these two countries, North Korea and Iran is going to be highly hit by the sanctions. But Russia is not going to be very hard, hardly hit by the sanctions because they have more bargaining power, right? They have more bar bargaining power. Putin uncle have nuclear weapons, right? So just he has made the statement that we have put our nuclear forces on standby, right? So standby means what? That is going to be what? That is going to be the important statement and more negotiation kind of the thing is going to be pushed by other countries, right? So, but still, but there is a chance if the sanctions are going to be in the longer run, maybe Russia is also going to face the galloping inflation kind of situation right i hope this galloping inflation is clear okay a lot of people have commented i have not seen that okay mm -hmm -hmm. fast increase in the price double or triple inflation when the inflation is in double digit okay good good rapid inflation double digit triple digit inflation nearly telling this law to my parents flying chapel received <laughs> Uh, parents, payroll pay, aate hai mille tab. Okay, Anujan, sorry to interrupt in between the class, sir. How I can get it in the group of the paid student? How I can pass the doubt as I started late? I am covering previous lecture first. Have a doubt. Anu, you can, you can contact uh, admin. Right, they will add you. You you can you can contact to the admin Ashok ji. You can contact to the Ashok sir. He he is going to add you in the group. Then you can contact me. Okay. Okay. So is it clear right now? अगर आप लड़के हो के मम्मी की चप्पल नहीं खाए तो लानत है आपके ऊपर. Okay. Now. Uh, let's move from galloping inflation. See, I, I explained you what normal, then high inflation to galloping. Then comes hyper inflation hyperinflation hyperinflation means what hyperinflation here we need not to count in it is in double digit or triple digit there is no fixed digit right inflation can reach to any level inflation can reach to any level the classic example after the first world war after the first world war germany lost the war right and when Germany was lost the war, I will tell you the reason why the Second World War happened. One of the reasons and the rise of the Hitler. So you should not punish a country too much if a strong country is there. Why, why West is little bit scared of Russia? I will tell you the reason. You can compare. If you will understand this thing, you will understand why you not push the Russia. 
why you don't want to push the Russia too much, despite they are doing this thing. So you have created this situation, right? So what happened after the first world when Germany got defeated, this country, France, Britain, and each and every, the victors, right? The victors, they want to teach the lesson to Germany, right? And especially France. Why? Because before the first world war, 20 years back, there was a war happened between Germany and France and Germany has defeated France and at Versailles, France, Versailles is in France and France was forced to sign a treaty, right? So after First World War, French got this opportunity to settle the score, especially in terms of humiliation. Right? So they emphasize that the treaty is going to be happened only in what? Only in Versailles. So after First World War, Treaty of Versailles happened. And for when the treaty negotiation was going on, the entire delegation of all the defeated power and victors are being there. So in the conference hall, the, all the victor powers like uh, Britain, uh, Germany, sorry, Britain, France and other countries who are the victors, they are having a negotiations. So once the negotiation was completed, they asked German delegation and that German delegation was headed by their prime minister known as chancellor, right? So chancellor, German chancellor was arrived in the hall and he was not allowed even to sit down. He was standing and other head of the states were sitting and he was asked Ki, we are going to let you know the terms and condition and you have to say yes. The first condition, you should accept the entire war happened because of you. Agreed or we will destroy the German state. So he said agreed. So when you said agreed, okay. The second condition, because you are agreeing ki war happened because of you. So whatever the loss of money or industry or whatever the loss has happened due to this war, you are going to be repay for it. And this amount is known as means this amount is going to be known as reparation amount. So you have to pay the reparation amount and amount was so huge. If Germany was paying that amount, Germany was able to repay the entire amount in year 2011. Right. So, but you are forced to pay the amount. So German central bank in order to pay that money, German central bank started printing more number of currencies, more currencies, more currencies. So because of excessive amount of German currency was in the European market, the value of German currency got down and they have started printing the minimum uh, bank note of 1 lakh, minimum note of 1 lakh because the price of commodity like bread packet, which you are going to get at the price of 25 rupees. So suppose that you just woke up in the morning and mother said that you go and just purchase the bread and milk, right? So you went to the shop and you were just asked you one liter milk and bread packet. He told you 25 crores. So you just from your pocket, you have given <coughs> I do not have a change, take it 30 crores, 5 crores, I will take back it later. So this kind of the situation happened in Germany for almost 4 to 5 years. So Germany was humiliated, Germany was economically broken down and that is why the strong leadership like Hitler was able to rise in the Germany because of that humiliation, people of Germany want to take a revenge. So whatever the action you are going to take against Russia right now, that is going to be considered by the Russians as an humiliation. They are not going to understand this thing. Ki our, our president is doing the wrong thing in the Ukraine. Whatever the action you are going to take against Russia, they are going to believe this thing. Ki all the Western countries and other countries have the bad intention toward our country. So in that way, the strong kind of the leadership rises and that was the reason for the rise of Hitler. So the economic structure was completely destroyed and price was moving something, whatever means you can imagine the price that can be possible of any commodity. So when inflation is out of control, it is beyond control, then we will use this term hyper inflation. So inflation went hyper. Yes, Zimbabwe.
right zimbabwe again face so many countries were facing this hyper inflation kind of the situation and that is why because of the poor policy making right at a point of time argentina was also facing this uh, hyper inflation kind of the situation so many times this this thing happen and if uh, for example if pakistan if pakistan is going to be put under the blacklist by fatf financial action task force right now they are in the grey list if they are going to be put in the what blacklist so pakistan is not going to get any financial assistance from any financial institutions of the world and if you are not going to get any financial assistance and you have to repay your loans then in order to repay a loan you must have to print more currency and as more currency you are going to print your inflationary rate in your economy is also going to increase and increase so at a point of time again the galloping inflation or hyperinflation kind of situation may arise in your neighboring country and that is not good for india i just explained you the reason right yes very good ashwini venezuela venezuela is a recent example right recent example where the hyperinflation exist you can read on the wikipedia hyperinflation in uh, venezuela and there is a good article uh, venezuela's hyperinflation you can read it there if you want otherwise i think i have explained so what is hyperinflation when inflation is beyond your control right you cannot control it then it is hyperinflation now if inflation uh take an example of india because of certain reasons inflation was increased to 8% right but now inflation is decreasing from 8% to 6% and 6% to 4% right so this phase this phase when the inflationary rate starts decreasing when the inflationary rate starts decreasing we called it as a this inflation please focus on this term that is this inflation i am not saying deflation deflation is a different phenomena deflation is a different phenomena this inflation is a different phenomena this inflation means when the inflationary rate starts decreasing right inflationary rate inflation is still there means prices are rising but the rate of rise of the price start decreasing again if price is increasing but the rate of increase of the price starts decreasing for example from 8% to 6% for uh, 6% to 4% then we will call it as a what then we will call it as a disinflation disinflation so i hope it's it's clear what is this inflation so if the printing currency is not a solution then what we should do ideally i i will discuss i will discuss printing the more currency is never a solution printing the more currency is never a solution if you are going to print more currency you are going to win the more trouble right so you have to manage your resources right resources you have to manage uh demand side you have to manage the supply side try to whatever the sanctions or the external factors or whatever the structural factors are hitting your economy very hard like sanctions right like sanctions are hitting very hard or country is not having the taxes taxes you have bring down the tax so increase the tax increase your income that is also going to effectively decrease uh, kind of Uh, demand side so these are certain factors so i will discuss this part when the types of inflation calculation of inflation part is going to be over then i will come to that point ki how to manage the inflation right no not not just us sanctions us sanctions were not a reason for the fall of the venezuela it was very simple venezuela is also one of the largest oil producing country Hugo Chavez was the president of uh, Venezuela, and in his time, he make each and everything free to their citizens, right? And you know that when you are going to get each and everything free, you need not to pay taxes because your economy is flourishing because of the oil trade, right? 
because your economy is flourishing because of oil trade through oil you are getting more and more money right why dubai is remarkably mark shifted itself because dubai emirate know that ki uh, they they know that in 19 1980s at the end of 1980s they know that ki within 20 years our all oil wealth is going to be drained out so we are going to be the bankrupt so we must have to create certain things so that the income can be increased right so as as we are going to move away from this fuel based economy fuel based especially the conventional fuel based economy all those countries whether even you can look at the saudi arabia also saudi arabia is also transforming they are massively spending the money on the infrastructure they are massively spending the money on the renewable energy they have money so they are uh, investing more and more money on the renewable energy so that that renewable energy for example hydrogen energy hydrogen energy can be produced in saudi arabia after 20 to 30 years so saudi arabia must be remain a largest energy producer not only for the conventional energy sources but also for the non conventional or renewable sources right so these are the reasons okay so hugo chavez was very confident because of the oil trade we are getting huge revenue and we need not to put any taxes on our people so he was more populist leader and he taken more populist measures then what happened at at a point of time at a certain point of time for certain point of time means 2 to 3 years for that 2 to 3 years the oil which was 90 or 80 dollar per barrel that oil came to 39 dollar 32 dollar per barrel in his time so what you was getting that 80 dollar per barrel barrel now you are getting on you are getting what you are getting only 30 dollar per barrel plus us sanction us started saying that us always said that ki, i am not going to do any transaction with russia I'm not going to do any transaction with Russia. I'm not going to do it. How they put the sanctions? They put the sanction in that manner. Ki I'm not going to have a trade and commerce with Russia. I'm not going to have a trade and commerce with Venezuela. As well as whosoever is going to have a trade with them. We are also not going to trade with them. So if in any Indian bank is going to make a payment. If any Indian bank is going to make a payment for oil shipment for oil shipment from Iran, right? Oil shipment from Iran, then definitely that bank is going to be blacklisted by the US. So you cannot do the transaction at US, you cannot do the transaction with Japan, you cannot do the transaction with other European countries. Whatever your assets are being there, they are going to be freezed by the US government, right? Because of their law, <laughs> right? So what will happen? No Indian bank, so that is why Yuko Bank, for example, I'm telling you the case of the Iran. So making the payments for Iran, so Yuko Bank was authorized. Why Yuko Bank do not have a business at that point of time? So when first time the sanctions was pu uh, pushed on Iran, I'm giving an example of that time, that is around uh, seven to eight years back. So Yuko Bank was being uh, uh, as a created as a special purpose vacuum. And through Yuko Bank's branch of the Kolkata, the entire payments was being done to the Iran in order to get the oil, right? Similarly, for example, Russia, how the Russia's sanction are not going to impact India too much because India and Russia now they are trading in the rupee ruble rather than using the dollar, right? So they are in a certain ways, but because if you do not have any other thing like Venezuela, apart from the oil, they have just blocked themselves to get any other resources or any other source of the revenue. So that is why they were forced to print more currency and they went to the hyperinflation, right? So diversifying the economy is very important. Now, <clears throat> I just explained you about disinflation when the price are decreasing price are decreasing why price are decreasing price are decreasing because rate of price are decreasing because rate of 
rise of price is decreasing we called it as a this inflation right so now another case is suppose that the price of good was 10 rupees right so it price was increased from 10 rupees to 10 rupees 80 paise right but price rate rate of the rise of the price starts decreasing so it become 10 rupees 60 paise so it was 8 percent now it is 6 percent then it reached to 10.30 price again starts decreasing the rate of rise price is still increased means 10 rupees 10 rupees 80 paise price is decreasing but price is still high from the base price that is 10 rupees but when the price is going to be 9 rupees 80 paisa now this inflation is negative inflationary rate is going to be negative or you can say negative inflation then we will call it as a deflation we called it as a deflation and deflation is dangerous deflation is dangerous why because if the price are going to be very low that means producer is going to be in loss right he is going to be in loss and if he is going to in the loss he will do what either he is going to decrease the production right or he will fire some of the employee in order to recover the cost right in any of the case if production or employment is going to decrease definitely the household income right the household income household income is also going to decrease if household income is also going to decrease then what will happen then consumption and saving capacities is going to decrease it's like this okay just give me a second So, if the prices are very low, producer either is he is going to decrease the production or he is going to uh, fire the employees or the worst case he is going to do both. In this case, what will happen? Employment and income both are going to decrease. If both are going to decrease, whenever we will have an income, we can go for what? Consumption and savings. We can go for consumption and saving. Okay. When we will go for consumption and saving, that depends upon our income but if income is decreasing consumption and savings both are going to decrease and if savings is going to decrease then investment is also going to decrease right so each and every activity at financial level economic level is going to be in the negative phase so we will call it as a deflation and if deflation is going to persist for a financial year, if a deflationary tendency of economy is going to be persist for a financial year, then we will call it as a recession. We called it as a recession. And if recession is going to persist for two to three financial year, then it is known as 
depression more in terms of it is known as uh, economic depression not uh, mental depression mental depression will automatically come but it is known as depression the classic example the great depression of 1929 the great depression of 1929 was an example right so from here we can also learn the business cycle in very short production any rise in the production will lead to rise in employment rise in the employment level leads to income and income will allow consumption and savings that savings will go to in the form of investments and that investment again is going to allow the producer class to increase the production why it will increase the production because consumption is also going to increase and this rise in the consumption will allow price rise but moderate because price is going to rise because of increase in the consumption so there is a moderate price rise and that moderate price rise is going to allow producer to increase the production in order to get more income so this business cycle is moving in the clockwise direction it is moving in the clockwise direction right and when it is see this this business cycle is moving in the clockwise direction right in the clockwise direction it is moving but at the same time it is moving in this clockwise direction right but also it is expanding the size of the economy is expanding so when the size of economy started expanding right with the very fast paced initially initially when you are going to take very fast pace that is known as take off phase of economy take off phase of economy what is the take off is why the term take off is being used whenever any plane is going to take it off right so engines are going to be in the full speed so that they can take off so similarly when any economy start growing like indian economy or chinese economy so initially they were rising with the 9% 10% or 11% and even chinese economy went to the 12% but now it is not possible to grow with that 10% simple example suppose that any person is having the salary of 50000 whereas another person is having the salary of 5 crores right so if he is going to get the hike of what if it is going to get the hike of 50% his salary is going to increase what his salary is going to increase to 75000 so so 50% possibility is there but 50% possibility is not there even if he is going to get moderate hike of what it if it is going to get moderate means 10% hike then he is going to have a 5.5 crore salary right so here the percentage is low but the amount is very high here in this case percentage is low but amount is very high here the percentage is very high but amount is low right so similarly what happened when ek any economy start rising so initially it is bound to rise with very high pace very high pace so where that very high pace is known as take off phase so indian economy was in take off phase from 1996 to 2004 and uh, not only 2004 in fact 2000 89 so that was a take off phase of economy so india started with 4% to 5% and in between india also clock 
नाइन टू टेन परसेंट इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ रेट राइट बट इन द प्रेजेंट कॉन्टेक्स्ट इन द प्रेजेंट कॉन्टेक्स्ट और इवन इन द कमिंग कॉन्टेक्स्ट इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल डोंट कंसिडर द बेस इयर इफेक्ट राइट बिकॉज लास्ट ईयर इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ वॉज टू परसेंट सो दिस ईयर the economic growth is going to be little bit high so because of that base year effect maybe it is 10% so apart from the base year i am just telling you the overall average growth so somebody was asking question uh, i think in the telegram group he he is he is very puzzled ki why you want to calculate the growth of 2022 or 2021 even in 2025 so when you are having more and more calculations when you are having more and more more calculations so you are going to get more correct and relatively more correct data so this is the very welcome practice right because india is known as a notorious country okay notorious country in terms of manipulating the things at different different level not exactly notorious but the kind of practice india uh not only india more most of the countries will do this thing but india more frequently do this thing without any regret and india try to say that ki see this is this is the our way <laughs> right so that is why our economic data are not being uh considered as a right data from the international community right but if you are going to have a more transparent practice of calculating the data that means whatever the data and figure you are going to present at international level it is going to be accepted as a right data so this is why this practice is being started to calculating the data for longer duration rather than short duration right yes overestimation of so this is the take off phase so one is a take off phase and even after the take off phase even after the take off phase if you are able to sustain the good growth rate we called it as a boom economic boom so if any country is able to sustain good high growth rate maybe not very high growth rate but any country who is able to maintain high growth rate for a small amount of time like 2 to 3 years or 8 to 10 years then we can say that economic boom right so when we say business cycle so there is a phase right boom and recession so so when economy is having boom and recession recession and boom so that is a kind of a cycle which happened especially in the capitalist economy at a point of time it is rising with the very high pace at the time of uh, at the point of time they are going to the recessionary cycle so that is why the business cycle term is used here in this uh, means uh, exam it is not very relevant to discuss in the detail but just just have a clarity a cycle of recession and boom means normal growth to the high growth high growth to the growth rate is decreasing 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 and it is going to be negative and from negative deflation recession depression then you will come out of depression and you'll be having the normal growth normal growth to high growth high growth to boom and from boom again you are start decreasing so this kind of the cycle is going to happen known as a business cycle i hope it is clear is it clear mm. 
Now understand this. Just understand this term here. Why it will come and how we can come out of stagflation. I will explain you later. But just understand what is stagflation. When your economy is going to face face both, right? When your economy is going to face both things, both things what? High inflation plus recession kind of the situation. So high inflation and recession kind of the situation is defined as stagflation. Why it is a special thing? Because generally what we believe that if we will increase money supply, if you will increase money supply in the economy, what is going to happen? If you will increase the money supply, that means demand is going to increase. An increase in demand will push what? This increase in demand will push production. More production means more employment, more income, more consumption, more savings. So money is going to push or trigger the economic growth. That is true. But sometimes what happen that also backfires, that also backfires. So rather than the rate of production is going to increase, but price are going to be increased in a such a manner. So you are going to face the high inflation and recession like situation. Prices are very high, but at the same time, economic growth is low. I, I, I will explain in detail. I will explain in detail, but you just have this idea in the mind. What is stagflation? Just imagine ki how, how I can understand this stagflation. Stagflation means a kind of situation. The prices are high, but at the same time, there is high unemployment. Your country's GDP is continuously decreasing. At the same time, you are facing a kind of what? You are facing the kind of situation of high inflation. So you can imagine that situation and you the, the term is going to come in your mind is what? Stagflation. Stagflation. Right. And it is one of the question repeatedly asked in various competitive exams. What is a stagflation in the situation of stagflation? So these are the punchline of the various competitive exam. They do ask this thing, right? So you must have the idea in your mind ki what is stagflation, right? What is stagflation? Is it clear? Stagflation? Then I will, if it is clear, then I will explain you greenflation. New term, greenflation. Stagflation is clear. It will come again. When I will discuss the measure to control inflation, stagflation will come back. But for the just right now, is it clear or not? Okay, so what is greenflation? Right now there is a focus on renewable sources of energy, right? Renewable source of energy, for example, solar panels, right? Solar panels. So generally it is considered as it is a cheap source of energy. Sustainable means clean energy as well as it is cheap, right? Because one time cost. But in the recent time, what happened, especially in last six to eight months, what happened? The price of the input items, the price of input item, or you can say the raw material, which is used for various renewable energy sources. The raw material, for example, aluminum. Right. So 
almost 70 60 to 70 percent of aluminium production is done by the china right so china has curbed the aluminium production why because aluminium production or aluminium smelting take uh, causes lot of uh, greenhouse gases so in order to decrease their carbon footprint china has curbed the aluminium production right and because of low production production got low so supply chain crisis and that supply chain crisis caused the price rise of the renewable energy right the price rise in the renewable energy and see energy fuel food these are some few things which can trigger the overall inflation they can trigger rise in the overall inflation so that is why the rise in the price of raw material of renewable sources was a discussion point among the economists all over the world and term came what green inflation green inflation term is coined so sometimes sometimes these kind of the terminology will ask in your exam why it was recently in use i i already explained this term let's see how many of you are able to recall this term i already explained this term which i'm going to write on the screen that is sorry not double digit double dip double depreciation double depreciation and i have given a particular example for that can anybody recall there are the many people in this session who was in that session and i remember those who was in that session few names i can identify chetan and venkat was in that session i still remember so answer must come what is double depreciation double depreciation is like in your class you are start for example class 9th student just imagine class 8 9th student so report card is being given by the class teacher and when while you are taking your report card card from your class teacher he is given you some two three prasad means ki for the performance he has given the prasad then you just came out of the class and you were you was moving in the corridor you saw your principal right you saw your principal and he saw that you have your report card in your hand right so he just asked you to show your report card and you have shown the report card he has again given you so in the school you was beaten twice but you was beaten in the school that's fine okay so school you are you are beaten in the school i am considering one so after the school when you reach your home and dad was waiting for you and he saw that ki because his principal called him ki we have given his report card you can check it so once you reach in the short interval when you reach this home you was beaten again right so in the very short interval you have faced recession again and again right then it is known as double dip recession for example 2007 9 recession in us and again when you are uh, not recovered but you are coming out of it so it is not like you are recovered right you are not no v shape recovery is a different thing no 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 v shape recovery is a different thing but you was trying to come out right but again you went there right so it is not u shape it is invert u shape so this was the recession you went out it was a normal right so you are moving towards what see 
this is the normal right so you went down to the recession you went down to the recession and you are recovering from here you are recovering from here you went here but before going to reach here you again come under the recession so this was recession generally what happened generally it should be like this generally it should be like this this is the normal phase this recession that the time lap between this recession is going to 10 to 15 years but you have faced a recession within very short interval two to four years so that was a unique thing right that was a unique thing because that was not happened in the past so back to back recession so you have faced the back to back recession that is why it is called as a double dip recession why the term dip is used because when we will take a tea especially tea bag or a tea so one dip abhi color nahi aaya we are not able to get the good color so again dip so dip in the very short interval ab ye thodi na ki you have dipped one and you put it outside and after when it is going to be 2 minutes then you are going to dip it again it is not going to be effective tea right so you have dipped it just take it out and again dip so that is why the in the short interval when you are going to face two back to back recession we will call this a double dip recession right ha now people are able to get this thing ki i have given the example of tea bag without tea bag you cannot understand this double dip recession so dip is is used in context of what is used in context of double dip for the tea bag in w shape recovery we will also have a dip and again dip that is in the context of recovery and tell me the reason where, where, wherever you have got the recovery so recovery is a different thing right recovery is a kind of somebody got ill right somebody got ill and you have started the treatment so you have started the treatment okay you have started the treatment and in between of the treatment you have start you have stopped the treatment so his health is again going to worse and then you have again start again you went the for the same treatment so his health is improving so recovery is a kind of input you are going to put there right so you are making your efforts but recession double dip recession what you are not doing anything but still you are facing the situation so you cannot use this term double dip recession or double dip kind of the recovery so for the recovery we do not use this term we use the term for the recovery v shape recovery u shape recovery different different shapes recovery but the double dip recession is a different term so you cannot use this prefix double dip recovery you cannot use this because it's not in the literature but still if you want to use you come want to come out of the league then it's fine but it is not accepted okay so i hope this is clear right now what is left in this part calculation of inflation the calculation of inflation is left uh, i already have those pdf means with me i want to discuss with the uh, how to calculate the inflation but it is going to take some time so i'm not going to discuss here right i'm not going to discuss here right right now i will discuss it tomorrow now the another part which i promised you ki i will discuss with you that is descriptive part not the lipolis descriptive part the descriptive part <clears throat> so first in very quick time just put any of the question if you have in your mind with respect to the descriptive part then i will explain if you have any question just immediately let me know your time starts right now immediately type if you have any doubt or something whatever you have in your mind related or fear or how to tackle whatever the question you have in your mind with respect to descriptive just put it here i will like to answer first then i will explain my position
how to write introduction part okay Okay, and just try to find a question. Just give me a second. How to write an introduction, start, how to write descriptive answer, how to write introduction. Priya is asking, sir, intro ke first line mein shuru karne mein problem hoti hai. Okay. Rajanan, how not to panic while writing if you start forgetting the data and related stuff. Okay. Nice question. How to prepare ESI. Okay. Are descriptive question purely theoretical or opinion based? Mostly they are opinion based how to connect introduction part to current affairs okay if we quote only few data then can only giving the theory suffice okay oh i guess uh, you ask us to write a question and you will show your response abhishek patak okay how to write an answer to those questions Ask, elicit, or explain my power. And since the current part is dynamic, changing, how to tackle it? Winkit is asking. Most questions will ask from which part of sir. Please take the last year's poverty question. How to know this question? Okay. Finance and management make strategy video soon. Finance and management makes strategy video soon. Are you saying what you want, Prashant? What do you want to ask me? Finance and management makes strategy video soon. Okay, you want a video on finance management strategy. How to handle that part? Okay. Okay, this is what you are asking, Prashant. Strategy video on finance and management. This is what you want. But, okay. Okay. <clears throat> Can you see the question on the screen? Okay, Prashant, I, I will do that. I will do that. Can you see the question? It is a previous year question. Monetary policy is not terrorist for India long term economic challenge. Right? Can you see this question? Okay. So, 
what you have to do you have time till then all of you all of you who are in this session all of you who are in this session right i am giving open opportunity to all of you whether you are a paid subscriber or you are not a paid subscriber i am giving this opportunity to all of you you should write answer but there is a condition i will check it i will check it and i will give the personal feedback but there is a condition i am giving you you time till then tomorrow 8 am in the morning right so what i am going to do is by this time you must write the answer in 200 words right 200 words even the word limit is going to exceed i am not bothered with that i am not bothered with that even if your word limit is going to increase right so don't worry about the word limit but have the idea you have to write two pages right you have to write two pages this this side in this side two pages you have to write right so have this idea in the, your mind and you should write first prepare and then write prepare and write i will check your answer and i will give you the feedback first the general discussion then i'll give you the one to one feedback also that is my promise to all who are going to write and submit cut off time is 3rd march 8 am after that i am not going to take any even if you are going to submit i am not going to evaluate but if you are going to submit by 8 i will definitely evaluate and i will give you the feedback in return means i will return the checked copy to you but you have to accept this condition now how you can submit how you can submit you can send whosoever is in this session whosoever is in this session their name right with their name they can send mail to us right i hope you know the mail id how to submit just just give me a second just give me a second i will talk to uh, ashok ji first then i will get back to you how to submit
okay you have a question is i'm audible okay i'm audible i'm audible i have unmuted myself okay i'm audible so how to submit those who are asking how to submit now you can see that there is a email id written here info at the rate crackgradeb.com right this is the mail id you have to write this question you have to write this question cutoff time is 8 am 3rd march all of you whether you are paid subscriber you are not paid subscriber i will check your copy and i'll give you the general feedback by writing comments on your answer and apart from that i will also give you the one to one feedback i will call you i will discuss with you so you have to mention your name your email id and your contact number and upload in pdf if you are going to image file or any other file i am not going to evaluate right you must it is handwritten or typed i have no issues even if you are in your exam you have to type but even if you are going to write on your own hand right i have no issues you can write or you can type whatever you want but the condition is it should be in the pdf because i have to annotate and for that i need what pdf file right i'm not going to convert the your image file in the pdf file this this pain i'm not going to take i'm very honest with the things so that's why i'm telling you so i'm not going to take that pain if it is not in the pdf i'm not going to evaluate number one after 8 am i'm not going to evaluate so you can write but i also if i'm putting the conditions then definitely if you are going to fulfill my condition i am also going to give you the good feedback also proper feedback not just the time pass kind of the thing right so this is the time you have write your answer and get a feedback from me and on the basis of that feedback i will discuss i will show the answers on the screen tomorrow and i will discuss those answers ki what are the common mistakes you generally do so when you will see the mistakes right when you will see the mistakes you will learn in the better manner fine so this is the question you can write okay in in question see in in the real exam you have to type but here i am giving you both option right are pehle stirring pakadna sikhna padega na then we will have a ferrari but first try to have hold the hand on the stirring right so it doesn't matter are we allowed to use internet whatever you want to use it's a open question open test whatever the source you want to use that's why i have given you the question a tricky question right so you can use any source you want it's your wish but if you are going to copy the entire text i am going to find it out immediately so read read analyze and then write word limit i told you what is the word limit word limit is 200 words but i am fine if you are going to write even in the 300 words i am i have no issues 200 words means two pages right one and two right so this is the thing you have to do and i have taken the screenshot of all of the questions you have asked me in this session regarding answer descriptive part this is why i have asked you to uh, just type your questions so i will address all those questions when i'll evaluate or i'll give the feedback on your copy mahi <coughs> actually i am not just a teacher i am a bad teacher also right and i am a good teacher also and i am evaluating the copy of civil services aspirants since 2012 when i was also aspirant right so i am evaluating the copy from that time and not for only general studies but also for political science okay so i am going to know that what you are going to do right so i have sufficient experience of evaluating the copy even for the civil services aspirant from 2013 onwards 
for both general studies and political science because political science was one of my optional right so i can easily find it out don't worry okay <laughs> chalo then let's wind up today's session i hope you are going to uh, in this session oh 28 people uh, in the live chat so 28 people so i hope 29 okay fine so i hope lot of answers are going to be sent by you at least 15 to 20 answers i am expecting बेटा कानपुर से हैं टोपी नहीं पहना सकते हमको समझे हम पूरी दुनिया में टोपी पहना तो तुम हमको टोपी पहनाओगे ओके देन सो गुड नाइट टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड आई रियली अप्रिशिएट योर पेशेंस यू आर विद मी सिंस लास्ट टू आवर्स आई रियली अप्रिशिएट आई एम रियली थैंकफुल टू ऑल ऑफ यू यू आर बीइंग अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस सेशन विद मी for last two hours thank you very much we will start tomorrow at 8 8 to 9:30 the session then on your performance basis the descriptive part i am going to discuss saurabh sorry today it i i have given you that i think i have given you a time of 10:30 to have your session but i will take it tomorrow tomorrow morning i'll i'll text you i will text you the time okay sorry sir because right now i am little bit exhausted i am not going to able to completely focus your interview is on fourth right hmm i i will i will text you the timing for tomorrow morning i will text you the timing okay no no i am not working with the rc reddy but i am also not going to tell for whom i am working but i am not working for the asir reddy that is for sure okay then thank you everyone and good night i will meet you tomorrow at 8just quickly say yes so that i can stop the session okay okay everyone bye bye good night